Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned. Today we're going to be looking at Rails again. We are going to add an endpoint to our API so that way the user can update some of his information. And let's go ahead and dive in right away. So we've only changed a few files here, our config routes, to add a new route in our user's controller. We updated our YAML for a nice little internationalization. We've updated our model user, and then we added a spec to test it all. So down here into our API users, we've added the default update back to our user's controller. That's it there. And then here, we're going to go ahead and we've added a before action to authenticate our user. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar and you remember, you can look, we did that with our ping controller using auth here. So it's similar to that in that it'll call the device uh, and then use device GWT to make sure we have a current user available. Otherwise, it will throw a 401. So the endpoint lives at API v1 users some ID. So we have a current user available to us. And then we're going to call update on some user params. If it's successful, then we'll go ahead and just render out this JSON out with a new message controller as users updated, which lives in our YAML down here under controller as users updated. And then we'll go ahead and return the dis for display for the current user. If something goes wrong, we'll go ahead and rescue this out. And so that is that file. E4 display, we've added display name and username. Uh, one thing to note is I am using a camel case here rather than snake case because our front end API is going to be well as felt and it's normally in camel case for JavaScript stuff. And then we have this nice little spec. Above, you could see we still have the available. And then down here, we're going to add a few tests. Let's walk through each of them. First thing to note is it requires a user. So if you go ahead and just hit the endpoint, it's going to have a 401. So you have to have the proper headers there. The next test is we're going to update for the current user only. So if we have created a user, we have the proper headers. We hit that user's uh, endpoint for the API. We pass in some parameters, and this is the user. Now let's go scroll down real quick. I didn't actually show this. Here's our user params. We're requiring a user and we're going to permit display name and username as the two things that we can change at this point. We will add more later. So in our test, we're just going to throw in display name of hello and then with the proper headers. Now, if you wanted to make this uh, super expensive, we would probably test for both display name and username and just make sure that each of them can be updated in turn. I'm not doing that right now. Not a big worry to me, so, but you should. Uh, depending on how expensive you want your tests to be. We're going to parse our JSON response back out. We're going to say it's a 200, and we're going to check the value of display name and make sure it's hello. Finally, it's going to not update for another user. So if we create two users here, we get the headers for the second user, and we're trying to update the first user's uh, username. We're going to get everything back, and it'll be 200, but the first user's name is not going to be hello. Um, and I might need to do a, actually, the parsed user, that's fine. I'm going to check the original user reload, but see the parsed user here is not hello. So that's fine. Finally, we're going to check our 500. We're going to do the same thing here, and we're going to throw in the non-user part of the body here. And that's going to just throw in something random, and that'll throw that 500. So we can go ahead and run all of our specs real quick. While that's running, I'm going to load up a Chrome with um, coverage here for programming TIL. You can see it ran all of the Tests and go look into our coverage here. Index a little bit bigger for you guys, real quick. Here's our API users controller, and you can see 
here that it ran the code and it tested it properly. So we feel pretty good about that. Again, I'm not a huge stickler on code coverage. I'll probably do it for most of the Rails API stuff uh, just to give you guys more examples. And, um, but it's generally for, I'd like to do it around mission critical stuff. So updating user, I feel like is kind of critical. You don't want users updating other users information. So that's it for this episode. If you guys like this and subscribe, that would be fantastic. We're gonna continue to build out our application. Thanks, see you guys next time.